Good evening and welcome to this virtual Board of Education meeting. Attending a virtual meeting may be a new experience for some, so please allow me to take a moment to review some procedures that will allow everyone to participate. When speaking, please state your name, address, and topic before beginning your comments. Some meeting participants are joining by telephone and cannot see the face or name of the speaker shown on the computer screen. The public participation at board meetings as per bylaw 0167.3 applies to this virtual meeting as well. Please mute your phone or computer microphone to prevent feedback and background noise during times when you are not speaking. There is a chat box in the upper right hand corner of your screen. The chat box may be used to pose a question. The name or telephone number of the person posting the chat comment will appear on the screen. The board president will read the question aloud during the appropriate section of the meeting for the guests calling in by telephone. This meeting has an opportunity for public comment under number nine on the agenda. If you would like to register to make comments during this meeting, please type your name, address, and topic in the chat box at this time. If you are joining this meeting by telephone tonight and would like to register to speak, please state your name, address, and topic now. All Board of Education votes will be conducted through a roll call vote. The meeting is being recorded and the recording includes anything typed into the chat box. And with that, President Johnson, the meeting is all yours. Thank you, Dr. Opper. We will come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Petke, if you could call the roll, please. Mr. Seeger? Here. Mr. Ford? Here. Mr. Holman? Here. Mr. Scheller? Here. Mrs. Petke here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Johnson? I am here as well, thank you. Dr. Opper, can you verify publication of meeting, please? Yes, it was. Thank you. Presentation, Academic Performance Data Overview. And I wanted to share with you some general information to provide some context for how we're doing. And we use Forecast 5 Analytics um, this is the same company that Mrs. O'Brien uses for the forecasting of our uh, financials, and, and you've seen some presentations from her on that. Um, the presentation this evening gives us a little bit of a look at how we compare with our near neighbors, um, those around us here in Wapaka County, as well as some like peers across the state. And that kind of sets the stage then for how we decided or arrived at um, the goals that we're recommending to the board for our key performance indicators in the academic area. And then I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Cerno to give you the highlights of the district literacy plan that you're going to be approving or asked to approve later this evening. So to begin, uh, the peer group comparisons. To get some peer groups across the state, um, we looked at those with an enrollment ranging from 530 students to 730 students. And you notice that Manawa in the blue line is right about in the middle. Uh, in terms of low income, this would be uh, students identified via the length program, free or reduced, uh, again, we're in that mid-range. So it's those with low income ranging from 39% to 45%. And then finally, um, students with disabilities. And you'll notice we're also in the middle of that range 
um, a low of 9.26 to a high of 17.27%. And then you see how we compare with our county peers, and we're on the lower end um, of that range, um, but somewhat in the middle of the uh, enrollment between Iola and Marion. So how did we do on our state report cards? The last time we had a state report card was in 2019. So we're taking a look back and we're looking at some trend lines. The most prominent color you'll see is the green color that seems to stand out as more bold with the others in shadow. Uh, that green line is Manawa. So you see that um, going back several years to 2013, um, that was the year before I arrived in the district, um, we were at a lower point um, than you see uh, as we move through to 2016, uh, there's quite a rise as there, there was also with a couple of other districts. Um, some districts also notably had significant drops during that time period. But since 2016, um, there's been a gradual decline and we noticed that that pattern also seems to have occurred with most of the districts having somewhat of a, a decline. Um, that isn't, of course, what we want to see, but it was a statewide pattern. Um, so we were not dissimilar in that regard. Um, what we do find interesting, though, is to take a look at some of the other districts, like Gibraltar, who is in our uh, like peers group, and was doing well and has continued to do well, slight decline, but overall has been able to maintain and sustain their progress. We also like to look at those that were in that mid range, may have had a little bit of a dip in 2016, but then we see they've recovered. Um, so it's helpful for us to be able to talk with other districts to find out what are they doing? How have they been able to um, make those subtle but notable increases? Then we also look at our Wapaka County group, again, Manawa being the more bold line in green. And you see also that um, there are, our county districts have had some dips in 2016 when actually we had a significant increase, um, but they have since made some recovery and are holding at that level. Um, so again, we want to look at what's happening with our near neighbors. And we know that we are often compared to our near neighbors, so it's something that we're very aware of. One of the ways that we can examine what's happening with our peers is to take a look at how much we spend. So you see average spending is the line that runs horizontally across your screen. And the red arrow indicates where we are in terms of spending, that's Manawa in that light green um, dot. So we're slightly below uh, the state average in spending, but you'll notice that there are several other districts slightly below the state average in spending, but are performing closer to the state average. So again, we wanna ask, what are they doing? We also see Gibraltar in the far right corner. We know that they're a more affluent district. They spend significantly more, and it certainly shows that those resources pay off. It makes up for um, the challenges that they might have with the free and reduced lunch students of poverty. And here we see Wapaka County, again, average spending. Um, and we'll notice that we're a little bit above um, the average in spending, um, but in terms of performance, we're down here at the red arrow. So definitely we can see that um, with the spending that we're doing, 
um, we could be competitive. And so we want to look at how do we change performance based on spending our resources wisely, using all of our resources wisely. So to that end, I'll pause for a moment before I turn it over to Mrs. Cerno for her part of the presentation. Dr. Opper, can you maybe explain um, some of the changes that have occurred since your time with the district to the school report card um, as far as the metrics that are used and how things have changed over the past several years? Um, certainly. One of the most notable changes that we've had is a change in um, the assessment tool that is being used. Uh, so previously, we had a test called the Badger um, for grades three through eight. And more recently, that has changed to the forward exam. Um, in the upper levels, they also chose the ACT, ACT pardon me, and the ACT Aspire. Um, so the tests that are being used change. Um, some of the other metrics have also um, been adjusted as time has gone by. Uh, we're measured on closing the gap, and that would be any of our groups or subgroups, such as um, students with disabilities, students in poverty, and students who have English as a second language. So, in the early years, we made some very significant increases and jumps in our performance because we were performing quite low. Um, when I first arrived, we also had some challenges in the data that we sent. Um, one of the examples was we had inaccurate information being sent to the state about our students with disabilities. So, it gave the perception, the public perception, that we were performing very poorly when in fact um, it's what we call dirty data. Sometimes the information uh, that was being pulled out of our student information system um, wasn't accurately reflecting um, our performance. So we've done a great deal to work with Skyward, the supplier of our student information system, to clean up our, our data, cleaning up our attendance data, students with disabilities, English language, um, conduct, all of those categories have had intensive looks and, and we've really worked hard to clean up the information so that when the state takes a snapshot of our data, um, we know that it's accurate. We're having people put a second pair of eyes on it before those reports are being sent. So those are just a few of the changes that have occurred over time. Other questions? If not, Mrs. Cerno, if you'd like to take over the presentation to share um, why we're working so hard on district literacy. We, we've seen um, the performance pattern and our commitment to excellence. And so I turn it over to Mrs. Cerno, our district reading specialist. All righty, thank you. Are you seeing my PowerPoint? It's just now coming up. Perfect. There it is. All righty. So I had an opportunity to share this plan um, with the curriculum committee last week, and I'm pleased to share it again. It's been a lot of hard work putting it together. Uh, a few months ago, I was asked to put together a comprehensive literacy plan for the district. And so um, I will not lie and say this plan is finished because I believe it is definitely an ongoing um, work in progress. Um, but uh, tonight I'll give you just a quick overview of it. Um, the entire the piece of the plan that is finished is attached, but it's quite lengthy. So I will give you the quick version of it. So another happy look at data. Uh, data, we, we look at data all the time. Um, we try to look at trends. 
to put it in a nutshell, we know our data is where we want it to be. Um, the first one was a measure of our, our data. This assessment is called the Fontes and Pinnell running record data. Uh, Fontes and Pinnell running records are um, something that we give in our district three times a year. Um, we do a baseline assessment in the fall to see where our students are reading. Um, we check them again in the winter, and then we look at um, their growth in the spring as well. What sets this type of assessment apart from the STAR data is that this is a face-to-face -face with the teacher. So the child is reading in front of you, you are marking his or her errors, you're keeping um, track of their time, you're asking them comprehension questions. Mm -hmm. So it's a different measure than setting them in front of a computer and having them take a test. So it's interesting because this is color-coded to sort of show the same group moving through. And I think you can clearly tell when COVID hit um, and what an impact it may have had on some of our readers. For example, I'll take first grade, doing really well in winter last year, um, which would have been the last running record assessment that they would have had prior to leaving in March. Um, when we measured them back again in the fall, they were at 50%. So you can see the drop. The good news is, that everybody is increasing. Each grade level from fall to now in winter has gone up. So there's happy news. Um, we have some, we look at the ACT um, for reading compared to the state, so you can see that. Uh, our forward, as Dr. Upper mentioned, our proficiency in ELA. So if state is dark blue or light blue, you can see that we're, we're dropping behind. So what does all this happy data mean? Well, we know we are not trending in the right direction. That's obvious to us. Um, so we have to make a change. We need to change our focus, um, our implementation of pieces that are missing. So as part of the audit that I did, I worked with a um, literacy specialist from CESA 6. And she and I sat down and did a really deep dive into our um, balanced literacy model, uh, what happens what isn't happening, what pieces could be affecting our scores. And so we came up with some conclusions and that is how we set some goals um, to make things better. So here's some of the things we've realized. We definitely need more resources so our students have more books in their hands. So that's something we're working on. Uh, we need a team of stakeholders who are willing and passionate about making the changes. It can't be a team of one. Um, so I've reached out to create a district literacy team, which I'm happy to say has quite a few people. And we are meeting next week for our first meeting. So I'm hoping that team can help implement a lot of these positive changes. We know we need to progress monitor our changes so that we can see the difference in student achievement. Um, if you really want to look at the plan in depth, these are all the components so far in the Comprehensive Literacy Plan. Um, it's the current state of where we're at with balanced literacy at the high school, and then templates to use for that same audit for the middle school and high school levels, which aren't complete yet. Um, it has up-to-date district literacy data. It has a needs assessment with percentages of the different um, instructional contexts that are in place, has a five-year plan for implementation goals at the elementary school, suggested professional development and focus areas, a material resource list, so we already began purchasing materials that we know we need um, and more to come, um, analysis of the current book room status with a recommended number of titles that we should purchase to sort of beef it up, um, resources to do a classroom library audit if we choose, and then there's a link to the complete plan. So just in a nutshell, our goals at the elementary school is to continue our work with vertical alignment of standards that some of our Wednesday work that we've been doing, um, beginning to create our learning targets, making pacing guides, creating common assessments. This is all sort of the start of getting to know um, the standards and where we might be missing some things. Uh, for example, one of the things that we realized out of this work was that some of the early childhood standards weren't matching up with what was expected for the Common Core in kindergarten. 
So we saw that there needed to be um, some ways for us to backfill and, and fill in those gaps. So that's one of the big things we've learned from working on that. Um, K2 work study and phonics, definitely making that a priority, bringing in some training for better implementation. Um, working on interactive read-alouds, which we hope then will increase um, some of that higher level thinking that our students need to be doing on, on their assessments. Um, Focusing on independent reading and independent writing, we're hoping that we can really get some new books into those classroom libraries so students have more up-to-date materials. Oh, that was my next one. And then um, in the middle school and high school, just continuing to work on that audit with that um, district literacy team. That's something that I felt like I couldn't do alone at this point, um, Being spending most of my time at the elementary school. I didn't feel it fair to make assumptions on things at the middle school and high school. So those are things that'll happen um, this spring, um, spending time up there, but then also getting some input from those teachers as well. So this is a really brief timeline, really um, for myself, and so that everyone knows sort of what we're working on. So in March, establishing that team, which is done um, surveying teachers of literacy to gain perspective, working on that survey right now. Um, Sharing this plan with the curriculum committee and the board, check that one off the list. Organize summer sponsored workshop options, so that's something we have to get on the calendar for our teachers for the summer, and then ordering materials. Um, April, we're going to continue to review our goals, set some new goals for the high school and middle school for next year, and then in May, really make sure that um, we have the PD coming that we need for over the summer and for the implementation in the fall. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I know that's really fast, but uh, feel free to read it in depth. Do you have any questions? Otherwise, I encourage you to stay tuned. Um, one of the things that the curriculum committee has asked me to do is to give quarterly updates on the plan, which I like because that not only holds us all accountable, but it also keeps you in the loop as to some of the progress that we're making since it is an ongoing project. So you can look forward to that. Thank you, Mrs. Cerno. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mrs. Cerno. Okay, if there are no questions, um, next up would be the Q10, excuse me, Q12 survey strategies. Uh, so this week on Wednesday during our uh, Wednesday work time, we're going to be doing a recorded session for all district employees. I'm going to be showing the Gallup website um, just really emphasizing um, how the Gallup uh, website works, the confidentiality of the data. Um, I'll be going into the Q&A section, which I think will answer many questions that our staff have about how the Q12 itself is, is structured and what services Gallup provides in order for us to receive reports. Uh, the reports come in the form of PDFs, so uh, we pay Gallup um, in order to provide us with the data and do all the analysis so that it is completely confidential, uh, which I think I, the staff will find very reassuring. And then the goal over the next several weeks would be um, having the principals doing a quick overview of um, a couple of the questions each week really looking at what elements of personal reflection go into answering or responding to that um, Q12 um, question, because the statement has a much deeper meaning. And so taking a little time to make sure that everyone understands what's being asked. So uh, that's coming up uh, this week, Wednesday for the high level overview and then a more intensive look at survey questions in, in the next several weeks. All right, thank you, Dr. Rapper. Announcements. Contributions to the district. We received the following donations. Echo Ridge Ag Services, LLC, of a GE refrigerator bottom drawer freezer valued at $1,982.35 to the Manawa FFA. Home, Homeland Farms and Dick Piacheski, also known as Mrs. Cordes' dad, 
a donation of cheese curds for the National FFA Week valued at $73.37. So thank you very much for those generous donations to our district. Uh, consent, consent agenda, would any member like any item removed from the consent agenda to be discussed separately? We will vote then by general consent. And hearing no dissent, the consent agenda carries. Um, public comments. There was no one signed up in the chat box. Correspondence. There was no correspondence this month. Board recognition. Aspen Linger signed a letter of intent to North Dakota State University for track. Um, Mr. Wolfgram or Mr. Collins, would you like to talk about that a little bit? And um, it looks like Mrs. Linger is on as well this evening. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this honor to Mr. Collins because I think credit needs to be given where due, and, and these coaches do an enormous amount of work and Patrick has worked with Aspen for a long time. So Patrick, I, I'm more than honored to give you the microphone and, and the opportunity to honor your your star. All right, can you hear me all right? Yes. All right, uh, well, I'm delighted to uh, say some words about Aspen. I wrote up um, a couple paragraphs about here, her, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and read that, so. Um, Aspen's one of the most competitive performers you'll meet. She loves to race people. She never seems to get nervous or worried. Um, she just stays really cool under pressure. Um, she looks forward to competition. Uh, she likes to run against the best people to push herself to her limits. Uh, one of the things I like best about Aspen is that after the race, you're always going to see her shaking hands with her opponents. Um, she's got tremendous sportsmanship. She seems to get along uh, really well with her opponents, and it's really cool to see that. Um, she's earned four WIA state track and field medals during her two seasons competing. Uh, unfortunately, we missed the season last year, and I know she'd have more uh, if we were able to compete. Uh, she finished second in the 100-meter dash as a sophomore um, and was the anchor leg of a school record-breaking 4 by 100 meter relay that finished second at state as well. Um, her achievements put her among the highest class of athletes that have come through our school. Um, not only is uh, she a track athlete, but she's a well-rounded individual. Um, she loves art team and she's very creative. Uh, she frequently uh, splits time with track and art team uh, during the season, early in the season. Uh, and we think it's great when an athlete like Aspen can be a part of things and have diverse interests. Uh, we're really excited to see what Aspen can accomplish during her senior year this season. Uh, it's coming up. We're starting in about a month. Um, it was unfortunate that she lost a, a season last year, but I know that she's going to come back hungry. Um, she has some big goals to accomplish, and, and we're very, very proud of her earning a Division I uh, NCAA school uh, scholarship to North Dakota State is just outstanding. Uh, we wish her the best as she finishes a terrific high school career and continues that into college. Wow, that is impressive. Thank you, Mr. Collins. And a certificate will be sent to the high school for Aspen. We'll get those signed and, and on their way. Congratulations. Um, next, we have some recognition for the visual arts competition. Um, Kate Phelan, Lisa Yoder, Maya Stevens, Jack O'Brien, Olivia Agel, um, and I don't know if Mrs. Zabler wants to speak to their accomplishments or if she'd like to pass that off to Mr. Wolfram. Is Mrs. Zabler present for the meeting? Hopefully she's logged on. Yes, yes I'm here. Um, Thank you, Mrs. Zabler. It's up to you, Mr. Wolfgram, if you'd like to do it. I, I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, we have some wonderful artists, and it's hard to choose only five. I get to I get to send artwork from five students each year. Um, this year, uh, obviously, everything is virtual. Um, so Jack O'Brien, Maya Stevens, Olivia Ogle, Lisa Yoder, and Kate Phelan were chosen um, to have their artwork sent to the regional display. Thank you, Dr. Opper. Um, there are the pieces right there. Um, there's a link to a, a virtual display of those five 
um, they choose three that continue on to the state competition. So Maya and Olivia and Kate's pieces have been chosen as state qualifiers. So there's some beautiful, lovely artwork. I wish they could be seen in person. Um, and there will be another display of the, the state show coming out, I believe. I can't remember the exact date. I know it's on the sheet there someplace. I think it's early April. I think there's another display of the state pieces coming out. So we're just incredibly proud of our very talented artists. It's, they're just absolutely gorgeous. That, I agree. You can't fully appreciate them on the screen. Um, seeing them some them live is just phenomenal. Um, but even on the screen, they're breathtaking. Right, they're they're much better in person. I wish we could I wish we could present them in person. But I'm I'm very very proud of these people, regardless. That is definitely some amazing talent. I do see that some of you are present tonight. Would any of you like to say a few words about your experience with this? They might be feeling a little shy. <laughs> and it's okay if you don't want to either. <laughs> well, again, congratulations, one and all. And again, certificates are on the way to the high school for you. And on their behalf, thank you very much to the board for recognizing them. You are definitely for your artistic leadership. That's exactly what I was going to say, Dr. Robert. Thank you, Mrs. Zobler. You have done an amazing job um, guiding these students and, and helping them develop their talents. And we've seen so much of that over the years. So it's definitely appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we have some proclamations. We have a proclamation for Theater in Our Schools Month, which is the month of March. We have Youth Art Month, which is also the month of March, and Music in Our Schools Month, also in March. Um, so those proclamations from Dr. Stanford Taylor are in the board packet for you to review. Uh, Dr. Hopper, your report. Thank you very much. And I'd like to welcome our student council representatives this evening, our Colin Mosher and Amber Feetzer. Um, Colin, let's start with you. If you'd like to share what's been happening uh, from your perspective over the past month, um, some of the accomplishments of the student council. I don't believe if Colin is in this call, but I do know that I talked to Ms. Eck um, about me being in the meeting, uh, along with Andrea Wentworth. Okay, a change of game plan. Hi, Kyle, good to see you again. So uh, same question to you, Kyle, if you would like to um, walk us through um, what's been happening over the past month as it relates to student council. Um, so, uh, with student council, we've been trying to work out, um, plans with prom. Uh, one of our big issues right now is what we want to do, um, as far as location as the thrashery, uh, versus doing a tent outside in the parking lot. And it's, it's a very 50, 50 split down the, down the center for, um, students. Uh, I know my, me, myself, uh, I think it'd be a cool twist to do it at the thrashery and it kind of opens up public relations as well to the school. Um, I don't know if Andrea, if you have anything to add yourself to it. Um, I know as me being a part of, um, the musical, uh, we've been having uh, great fun getting that kicked off. Yes. I'm very excited to have homecoming this year. Um, I just have a few questions about homecoming that I would like to discuss. I don't know if I should wait till the end of the meeting or if i'm allowed to talk now i haven't been to a meeting before so oh well welcome we're delighted to have you with us and now's the perfect time to to share questions or comments that you might have that this is the chance when the board hears the student point of view so go right, right thank ahead. you you're welcome so one of the questions i was um 
I have is that I'm dating someone from New London, and I was wondering if it's possible if I could get them to come to the homecoming since it is outside. And um, I kind of did the math on who's all dating people from other school, and I'm pretty sure it's like six or something about. Um, so I thought since there wouldn't be like a percentage of how many people that would like relate to it that I would be able to bring someone. And of course we would have a fat, uh, COVID testing before that. So then we'd be all safe. And we do see other people outside of school. So it's not like um, we're not interacting with other people from other schools. So I thought, you know, it would possibly be okay. Maybe Mr. Wolfram would mm -hmm. like to answer that question. Sure, I, I can chime in. I know that I did a, a survey of all of the CWC schools. Most schools at this time are, are attempting to do a prom with, I think, the exception of Rochelt. Um, we've been trying to follow the mitigation strategies that have been adopted or endorsed by uh, the Wapaka County health of human services so as wapaka goes we try to stay united based off of those recommendations and up to this point the school board has has followed those recommendations probably 100 percent based off of mr wohit's recommendations and all of the schools in wapaka county currently are doing a problem or attempting to do one outside all of them are doing reduced hours, and all of them are not allowing outside visitors. So we're, we're following, at least at this point, the recommendations and trying to stay unified as per the recommendations of the Wapaka County Department of Health and Human Services. So that's what I can tell you at this point. Mm -hmm. um, another question that I had from a, from a uh, student was, um, regarding the, the gym access for after school. Um, we, we do know, know that people if you are above the age of 18 um, and uh, not currently enrolled in the school, they, they are able to get that pass to work out in the gym um, after hours. So we were wondering um, what was the restrictions of, of to why if, if we're just enrolled in school that we wouldn't be able to get access to the gym as well because it would be a, a very net positive um, for a lot of students that don't have time after school. I think, again, Mr. Wolfgram, if you want to speak to the Open Fitness Center um, is available to students um, with, with proper supervision. Right. Well, again, we've been following the recommendations that the board has adopted regarding um, visitors. And right now, uh, we have opportunities for students Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 3.15 until 5.30 <clears throat> for students within our district to be able to come in and be supervised. Uh, those students that are not uh, students or part of our athletic teams uh, should be directed to sign up through family access where they would receive a FOB and then be able to be supervised by a parent. So again, that's the protocols that, that have been adopted. Um, if there are some inconsistencies with people sneaking in, then that's, that's something that we would need to clamp down on. And I would check cameras and make sure to, uh, that we're following those rules to fidelity. All right. Um, and then I, I was uh, told this recently, um, and, and I guess I was a little shocked um, as far as being on the, the musical, be, uh, becoming the lead. Um, I, I was told that um, in order to do the musical, that on the stage uh, we were supposed to socially distance and we were required to keep our masks on. Um, and I guess I was wondering what precedent in the future, um, I, I guess, would allow would allow a performance to happen with masks off. Because um, I, I know that as far as as state mandate that as long as you are performing, 
Um, I, I don't believe that you have to wear a mask um, and that it would be a, it would be a net positive for um, a, a drama committee to be able to use uh, the lower portion of their face to express feeling to an audience. Again, Mr. Wolf Graham, being a director, will will defer again to your expertise in this matter. Well, what I what I can say again is that the proposal that we put forth, that was adopted by uh, the board and endorsed by Wapaka County, uh, I don't know of any other um, schools that currently are being allowed to do a musical or a dramatic performance. I could be wrong on that. There may be some other things, but. Um, mm -hmm. It's very fortunate that uh, with our mitigation strategies that we put forth, that Wapaka County endorsed and said, yes, you can do a show at all. So f for that point, I'm very excited. As a former music teacher, um, I know that uh, I did a lot of studying of the Colorado study of the particulates and uh, that, that come forth that are aerosolized. And I think that we are still uh, trying to endorse and, and hold fast to the studies that um, say that singing and performing, in, and especially in a mixed company situation, does produce a larger amount of particulates in the air. Um, again, I'm going by uh, the studies from Colorado State, uh, what's been endorsed by um, other doctors around the country. I certainly can empathize, oh my gosh, that I would love to be able to not sing with a mask on and the facial expressions that are limited based off of, of those mitigation strategies. But I, I think as the pandemic goes, we have to continue to hold through again with fidelity as to what was approved. Um, and our, our plan that went through and was adopted did say that the performers would be masked. So that could change as as things start to ease up, but uh, we would we would have to revisit that and get that approved by Wapaka County. Some of our speech and language therapists are currently using masks that have um, a clear area. Um, so it might be possible for us to take a look at um, getting some of those for our performers as well if if in fact, at the time of the performance, we still need to um, be wearing face coverings. Excellent questions. Thank Go you. Ahead. You raise excellent issues, both of you, and it's always good to, to bring the facts out into the light so people better understand why we do what we do. Mr. Wolf Graham spent a long time and lots of thoughtful reflection with other staff and coming up with the proposals for all of these programs. Um, any other activities going on with student council? Um, this week, uh, we are collecting money uh, to do a shamrock shake sale. Uh, we did a strawberry shake sale uh, before for Valentine's Day and we did not have a single shake that was made that was not bought. Um, so it was, uh, it was very successful. Um, and I know that the Shamrock Shakes in the past have been very successful, so uh, we're expecting some, some greater numbers to come in <laughs> um, to, uh, uh, to increase the budget. Um, I know as of right now, our, our student council budget is very high, um, and so we're looking forward to having that money potentially available um, to help out for um, the prom if it's needed. Very nice. Very generous too. Thank you. Andrea, how about for you? Any any other highlights coming up? Um, not really. We're just talking more on themes and whatnot on what we're gonna do for homecoming and just playing out a little bit here and there and then we're going to have more ideas as time comes closer to it so we've had an opportunity to visit with kyle in the past but since this is your first time tell us a little bit about um what your plans are when you finish high school 
Um, I don't really, I'm not really sure yet. Um, if I want to go to college or not, if I would go to college, I'd probably just do like a two year program or something. Um, I'm, I like welding and I might go into do that, but like I said, I'm not sure yet. There's, there are many good paying jobs with benefits in the area of welding. So um, mm -hmm. very interesting choice and wonderful that we have a program in our high school to support you in that endeavor if that is something that you would like to do. Well, thank you both. It was a pleasure having you on again tonight, Kyle, and, and it was great to be able to visit with you, Andrea. So, thank you. Going on with the report, a little bit of a legislative update. You're going to hear quite a bit um, from Mrs. O'Brien regarding the governor's budget, biennial budget plans, um, forecasting along those lines. So I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach and share some information um, that you may not have heard as much about. Uh, but there was a forum with the two candidates that are running for um, state superintendent of schools. Um, wanted to share a little bit about um, how their perspectives differ and encourage people to get out to vote. A, again, a very impactful decision for the state of education in Wisconsin. So we have Deb Kerr and Jill Underly uh, running. And so here are some of the key points where they differ in their perspective. Deb Kerr said she agrees with state GOP legislators who support tying school funding from pandemic relief bills to schools that reopen for in-person classes. Jill Underly said she opposes that policy. Underly said that the existing method to distribute the $75 million in funds using the Title I formula is a great way to make sure those funds primarily go to schools that need the most resources. She said schools in higher poverty areas will get more funding that way and funds would be distributed whether schools opened for in-person classes or not. However, Kerr said, she agrees with GOP legislators who think those funds should be distributed primarily to schools that reopen to in-person instruction. And DPI should offer more guidance on how to best distribute those funds. On another topic, Underly also said she would back the freeze on school voucher programs Governor Tony Evers proposed in his most recent budget. Underly said voucher and private schools are taking state funds away from public schools and taxpayers should not be funding them because they are not held accountable to the same standards as public schools. But Kerr said she does not support a freeze on funds because private and voucher schools help fill education gaps in communities across the state. While she does support private and voucher schools, she said she also supports public schools. Kerr added that state superintendents do not have the authority to impose such a freeze, but she said careful consideration over the gap for voucher program funding is needed soon. She went on to say, these caps will be lifted in the next four years. That is the law. So I think we need to figure out how we are going to work together to support all the kids of Wisconsin, Kerr said. On a different topic um, from the Wheeler report, the governor is going to be holding virtual listening sessions on a wide array of topics that would be of interest uh, to you as board members and potentially to the public. Um, all of them are being held at six o'clock PM. On March 18th, the topic is economic recovery and opportunity in Wisconsin. On the 25th, accessible and affordable health care. On March 30th, transportation and infrastructure. 
on April 8th, what's best for our kids on the 14th of April, justice reform in marijuana legislation, and the 21st of April, climate change and our environment. So again, everyone's uh, encouraged. Uh, you can get onto those virtual listening sessions by joining Badger Bounce Back. Um, in the curriculum department, um, the administrative team continues to work on the current state to desired state um, for our district literacy plan and the math plan. And then we're going to overlay that in the future with the social studies and technology plans. We hope to be able to share math and literacy with you in the month of April. Um, Later this evening, you'll also be talking about approval of the summer school program and the district literacy plan that you heard Mrs. Cerno highlight for you this evening. In terms of the COVID update, uh, the most recent uh, new information came out just last week from the WIAA, and we now have sports-specific guidance for the spring sports. That was uh, shared with the coaches, uh, our athletic director, um, and the principals and the rest of the administrative team for sharing in general as we prepare now for spring sports. Um, President Johnson and I are happy to announce that we're offering a board candidate orientation. Uh, that's scheduled for March 23rd. That's next week, Tuesday. Um, this is just an opportunity that we're providing. Many districts across the state offer this for candidates uh, running for Board of Education seats um, as a way to um, learn some of the jargon that we use in education, um, get oriented to um, the policy programs that we use and, and other things. Uh, so far, we have um, one person running who is a definite yes and uh, one that is not joining us and, and we have a third um, where we're hoping will join us for that. Um, so very informal, casual conversation, a, a chance to make inquiry as these individuals prepare for spring election day, which is April 6th. So again, the race for the state superintendent of public instruction will be occurring on that date, as well as the three board of education positions. So very important to encourage everyone to uh, do your homework and get out to vote. And with that, I'll turn it back over to President Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Offer. That brings us to school operations reports. Are there any questions regarding Mr. Wolfram's report or Ms. Bauer's report? And any comments from either of you? This is Dan. Um, the fitness center equipment, uh, one of the deliveries for the reverse hyper should be delivered within the next week. And the other two pieces of equipment that I highlighted should also be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, I am continuing to meet with the senior class and the advisors as we start to whittle down. Uh, we anticipate doing a senior vote uh, to determine the venue for prom within the next week or so, whether that be the uh, threshery or the high school parking lot. We have plans and preparing for both venues so we'll see where the kids would like to have it and uh, we'll go from there and i will report accordingly with a full mitigation plan thank you mr wolfram all right then we have business related reports are there any questions from mrs o'brien regarding her report any comments from mrs o'brien I do. I would like to um, give you a, a short presentation that um, is, I had the pleasure of, of giving to the Finance Committee this past week, or last week maybe. Um, so I am going to 
present my screen and let's just talk a little bit about finances. Um, so I, I wrote a, an article for the Wolfpack Express that should be coming out soon. And I'm, I just, you know, really want to, to let the community know that the Board of Education has made some very strategic decisions in the past uh, four years that have uh, led us to being in a very um, good financial place right now. So um, just to start off, um, the governor's proposed budget. So the biennial budget um, was proposed. There's about five things in the governor's budget that um, really affect the school district of Manoa. Um, and three of those, the first three there, the first three bullet points, um, allows the district to raise revenue through taxes. So there's a, you know, a small increase in the per pupil amount each year. One, you know, first year $200, the second year $204. Um, the governor is proposing that our pupil count be adjusted so that we take the greater of either the current year or the prior year. For us, we are in declining enrollment, and so our prior year um, enrollment is higher, and so that would be beneficial to, to us. And then again, an increase in the low revenue ceiling. So right now, the low revenue ceiling is at $10,000 and um, it would increase in the first year to $10,250 and then in the second year to $10,500. So those three um, changes or those three, three um, you know, parts of the budget would allow us then to, to essentially raise funds by raising um, taxes. It raises our revenue limit. Um, and the fourth item that, were, that was presented was that we would add um, in the per pupil categorical aid, um, it would increase by $8 for each student. And then it would also, there's a, there's a second caveat that increases by $75 for each student that is economically disadvantaged. So when you kind of add all that together, um, it adds about $5,000 to our, to our, um, our budget. Um, what I failed to, to mention is that the revenue limit adjustments allows us to raise an additional, you know, a little over $80,000, according to our forecast. Um, the last item there is uh, special ed aid. And what uh, the governor is proposing is to increase that to 45% in the first year and 50% um, in our, our special education. Um, expenditures so the the state would reimburse us at either 45% or a 50% level 50% um, the second year uh, for for our special education aid um, that adds quite a bit of money to our budget um, over a hundred thousand dollars that would what it essentially does is it frees up money um, if we receive more aid for special education right now we transfer Oh, probably right around, I think our transfer this year is right around $800,000. That would free up that money that we, you know, would need to transfer to Fund 27. So, whoops. Um, so what we're looking at then is um, without the governor's budget. So if nothing changed with the governor's budget, we're looking at a deficit for next year of $117,000. Um, and then in the following year, we would have a, a more significant deficit of over $400,000. Um, with the governor's budget, we would actually not have a deficit for next year. We would be around $72,000. And in the second year, we would only have you know, a small deficit of, of $49,469. Um, we know that with the climate in Madison right now, that there's no chance that the governor's budget will pass. Um, the legislators have, have chosen to start from scratch and build their own budget. So I'm hoping that we will, you know, find more information here shortly um, as to what, what our legislators are, are thinking. Um, so we will probably be doing this again uh, next, well, whenever they get their, their budget through. So that's just a general overview of the budget. What I want to talk about, though, is, is how financially, you know, the district is really quite stable and the conservative approach, has, approach excuse me, has served the district well and we continue to live within our means. 
Um, I wanted to pick out a couple of highlights from the last uh, four years here. In 2017, we started planning for a referendum and we surveyed our constituents. And then in November of 2018, that referendum passed um, with very high community support. And I think that's because this board really does listen to, um, to the taxpayers. Um, also in the past four years, we started our Fund 46, um, which is for long-term capital improvements. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we, as we get farther down um, in our little financial story here. And then um, the other thing that this board has done is we've adjusted to our, you know, through staff and program changes to meet the changing community demographics. We are undergoing declining enrollment. That's just, that's just a fact. And we have to make choices, hard choices sometimes um, to make sure that we continue to be um, financially solvent. So for 2020, 2021, I wanna review um, these three different pots of money, basically, to talk about you know, what, we're, what we're doing. Um, we had the referendum projects. So we had two referendum projects. We had the non-recurring referendum where we used to, um, to raise the old or former elementary school. And then we had our $12 million construction project. Um, in the general fund, we have, um, in the past few years, have, have gradually increased our fund balance. So I believe it's, it's time to start spending down some of that fund balance. And we created that Fund 46. We want to talk a little bit more about that. And then there's the federal funding that has become available due to COVID-19. And so the three programs that are currently, you know, that that we're, we're looking at are SR1, GEAR Act, and then SR2. Um, just heard within the last week that there more than likely will be an SR3. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we get there as well. So the non-recurring referendum, we, we received $365,000 to demolish the former elementary school. Um, we have spent to date $341,852.08. So you can see then the remaining balance is, is at um, $23,000 there, a little over. Um, what we would like to continue doing with that, um, with that project is to, um, you know, make sure that that green space is really going to, to take off. We want to make sure that we fertilize and, you know, potentially rake for rocks and, and get that, that space looking really nice. So um, with that $23,000, there's plenty of money to make sure that that happens. The construction referendum. Um, we borrowed $12 million for a school building improvement program. And so I took these bullet points straight out of our referendum just to remind everybody what exactly was, um, was approved or what the money was approved for, I guess I should say. We took that $12 million and we um, invested it in some um, uh, CDs and some certificates of deposit. And we earned a little over $180,000 in interest. So as of through, you know, all the bills that were paid through March, all of the interest that was earned, right now we have $634,000, $634,085.25 left out of that 12 million. Um, so I just carried that remaining balance over to this next slide here. And uh, we're looking at Continuing our continuing project is to repave the parking lot and driveway at the high school middle school. Um, when we received the quotes for that, the quote for that was uh, seven hundred and eighty-four thousand dollars over that, but it included a very large contingency. Um, we're not sure what we're going to find once we start tearing things up. Um, you never you never quite know what's going to happen, so we have a fairly large contingency there um, just in case. But you can see that the cost of that project is over what is left in the remaining balance of that referendum. So we're going to need to take some money out of the general fund um, in order to, to finish that project. And that's you know, as expected when you, you know, you're running your project where we're, you're never ever going to come out to be, you know, zero dollars right on the right on the head. Everything is exactly cost exactly what you borrowed. So you need to add a little bit more money to that. If all of the contingency is used, so if we need that 
entire $134,000, um, we would need to provide an extra $150,000 to the, to the project. But if none of the contingency money is used, we'd have to provide just a little under 16,000. So it'll be somewhere in between those numbers, I assume, um, where, you know, that we will have to add to this project just to make sure that we complete it. So that's our first pot of money that we wanted to talk about is the con the, the referendum so that you know where we're where we stand at this point. Um, first referendum, it, we still have you know twenty plus thousand dollars. Second referendum, the parking lot project is is going to um, take us down to zero with that. So my second pot of money here is the general fund, and the general fund last year at the end of June, we had, as far as our unassigned fund balance, so the money that, that we carry over from one year to the next, was a little over $2.2 .2 million. Our district policy requires that we keep our fund balance at least at 18% of the prior year's expenditures. So when you look at the $2.2 .2 million, you compare that to the 2019-2020 expenditures, it was at 25.8%. So we have more than what is required. And it's at 26% of our expenditures for this year. To avoid short-term borrowing, which is really why you have the fund balance at all, you, I've calculated that we need about 22% of the current year's expenditures. So if you figure out, you know, what is what is 22% of the two point, uh, or of our current year's expenditures, it's at 1.9 million dollars. So this is what led led me at the beginning of this year at during our annual meeting we talked about you know spending down the fund balance. Uh, we want to maximize our state aid and to maximize our state aid we need to borrow or not borrow excuse me we need to spend what we what we get. Um, we're, we're not trying to save up for, for anything we're just trying to you know use our budget money as as we um, plan. So I'm going to come back to this slide eventually because you'll notice that this 2.2 million and this 1.9 million, there's a difference there. I conservatively recommended spending it down by $200,000. So that gives us a little bit of a cushion. I didn't want it to come right down to the, to the nose on that one. So we're continuing talking about the general fund. Um, we, in finance, we talked about some different line items in our budget that just doesn't look like we're going to spend that much this year or as much as what was budgeted. Um, our substitute teacher budget is we haven't spent nearly the amount that we usually spend on substitutes. Part of that is because we've allowed teachers to work from home if they've needed to be quarantined or isolated due to COVID. Um, another reason is that we simply don't have substitute teachers to uh, to employ. So our our substitute teacher budget, um, we transferred forty thousand dollars out of that line into another line. Um, the snow removal budget, it was a lovely um, snow year for for plowing, at least on on my end where I have to pay the bills. Um, so we were able to take $25,000 out of that line um, item. And there's still money there. Don't worry in case we have a freak storm where we, I haven't transferred all of it, but um, but that's, we decided 25,000 was a, a pretty good uh, number that we could take out of that line item. Some things that Buildings and Grounds has purchased that were outside of our, our budgeted um, items was a pallet jack for a little under $350 and a scissors lift. So a little over $70,000, things that, that we needed just to you know, continue to do maintenance and, and receive deliveries in our buildings. And so when you add the 200 that I wanted to, to spend down of our fund balance, plus the, the 40 and the 25, that gives us $265,000 that we wanted to spend above and beyond what our budget was. We bought the pallet jack, the scissors lift, and so the remaining balance of that $265,000 is $247,000. So what things were we looking at to, to continue to spend down, you know, to spend that money in the appropriate way? We're doing some, some very strategic spending and, and planning this out. So we talked about um, the parking lots and driveways. Um, at the very most, we would have to spend an additional $150,000 on that if we spend all of our contingency and, and that, you know, could happen, but probably not happen. 
The other thing that we had looked into and that buildings and grounds had looked into is replacing the, the bleachers and concrete pad um, out by the athletic complex. So that was another item that, that we looked at. There's a couple more ideas on this on this continuing projects list. These are things that we just continue to think about, we know that are going to come up and we might have to um, think about eventually. Fund 46 is, you know, kind of part of our, our general fund. Not really, it's a, it's a separate fund, but Fund 46 is a separate fund that we keep, um, that we fund through Fund 10 to, um, to do long-term maintenance, or it's a long, it's a savings account to do maintenance projects on our long-term maintenance plan. So we started in October of 2017. You have to keep it for five years before you can draw on it. And so um, by next year, we'll be able to, to utilize that money if we need to. So currently we budget $50,000 each year into that account and our current balance is $200,000. The whole point of, of putting the $50,000 in each year is that we thought, well, in 20 years, that gives us a million dollars if we don't need it. But it is for those big maintenance things um, that could happen in any given year. And uh, the funding formula prior to opening up this Fund 46 didn't allow school districts to save money, so to speak, for those types of, of expenditures. So Fund 46 really was, um, was a great idea by the state that allows us to move money into the Fund 46 account and then it counts as an expenditure on, on the year that you're, um, that you're using it for, but really you're saving it for something bigger. Okay, we're gonna move into our federally funded pots of money here. And so I'm going to have to change my screen here. So if anybody has any questions while I do that, feel free to ask. Let's see, here, no, here. Hey Carmen, this is Danny. Hi Danny. Hi, I have a quick question and I emailed this to you, but since we have a moment, maybe I'll ask it really quick. Um, okay. The governor's budget, you were talking about the increase in special ed funding. Mm -hmm. Does that affect our maintenance of effort? No, because we would still be spending the amount of money. We would just re be receiving, it would it would come back to us um, in, in aid. So yeah, I, it would, I get confused on maintenance of effort. So that is, we have to continue to spend local funds for special ed students and maintain that amount? Oh, no, um, there would be some different rules, I'm sure, with that. Okay. Yeah. okay, all right, thanks. No problem. Well, now I can't. Okay, I have to stop presenting first, that's why. <sighs> Tell ya, there we go. Um, Nope. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've spent out of our um, federal funds that we have. Um, here's our SR1 grant. Um, this is the first one that came out. It came out with the, the CARES Act um, that was signed into law in April. And so we were allocated $89,177. Um, both the public and the private school got portions of that. And you can see across the top here that um, we have spent more than what we were allocated. We will be moving those expenditures into SR2 funds. So, you know, we're, we're overspent by about uh, $4,000 there so far. So you can see the different things that we've purchased with that uh, survey. We purchased some internet testing, um, you know, floor stickers and things. These are all things that we certainly would not have purchased had um, COVID not been a thing. Um, and then some other things. That was our first claim through the through the end of December, and then on the bottom here is our second uh, claim that we will be making um, for for those items. The Second pot of money that the federal government has given us is, um, it was called the GEAR grant. Um, and this was 
only for school districts who were significantly more affected by COVID than others. And, and the school district of Manawa did qualify for this year grant through the state of Wisconsin. So our total was uh, the 91,000 there. You can see private a little over 11, public a little over 80. And um, we spent all of those funds. I, I coded everything so that it would come out so that we spent that to the, to the, um, to the penny. So again, this is mostly for um, technology types of things, either, either um, software or hardware that, that we needed to be able to teach remotely. The last, um, so our first claim was through December and it was 36,008. Um, our current, we have one claim left and that's for the Chromebooks that did um, come in and, and we paid for in January. So that is our gear expenditures. And last but not least, we have our SR2 um, expenditures. Um, that we were allocated $361,354. Um, this has no private school allocation. They do have um, money that is coming to the private schools through ESSER 2, but it is through a different pot of money. It is not, um, and, and the public schools do not have to, to manage that or claim that for them. So you can see we have some different ideas about how to spend this money, but we haven't spent any yet aside from that $4,000 that will transfer over into there. Um, the things that are in kind of that um, orangish, yellowish, whatever color that is, are the things that the board has approved to spend that money on. And that is our new math curriculum and then training for our math programs. Um, We're looking at taking that all out of the ESSER 2 grant. ESSER 2, their main focus is on um, catching students up. So when we've had, um, you know, we can see in our data that students have, have potentially uh, fallen behind due to COVID. And so now um, they're, they're looking to fund programs that will help kids catch up. Okay, so now I have to go back and stop sharing again. And we're gonna go back to my presentation. Oops, I think I forgot to press share. There. And we're there. Can you see my screen? It's coming up. Lovely. It's back. <laughs> okay, so this is the last slide. Um, and thank you for your patience. I think this is an important conversation to have. So, so I do appreciate you giving me this time tonight. Um, in conclusion, um, essentially, our referendum, referendum money has been expended, you know, in, in for both of our projects, uh, both, both referenda. Um, ESSER 1 has been expended, as has the gear money. So, so those pots of money are, are gone. Um, and we have um, ESSER 2, which is a, a substantial amount of money, and we're looking at paying for curricular materials through that. So we have um, math materials, and then we also are looking um, to purchase some social studies materials that are out of the ESSER 2. ESSER 2, um, the application won't come out until April, so once, once that application comes out, we will make sure that we apply and um, that we have those funds available for us. Um, from what I understand, ESSER 3, they're looking at potentially um, giving school districts up to two times the amount that they received for ESSER 2. So we're looking at over $600,000, probably more like $700,000 in that um, area. Um, but the rules for that hasn't haven't come out yet. So we'll more more on that to come. So with the SR2 grant, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, not SR2. So the money that we have available for spending yet. Um, in the general fund, I carried over that number, that 247,000 that we have left to spend there. Um, we are not really looking at a deficit for 2021. Um, we have have there's going to be, um, or not there's going to be, but there's there's some um, staffing changes that will take care of the, the $100,000 deficit that, that I showed um, at the beginning of the slide, um, of the slideshow. There is some staffing, some staffing program changes that will take care of that. So next year, we are, we're not going to, um, we will have a balanced budget um, easily. The following year, depending on what happens with the governor's budget, um, could be significant. And so I just I threw that out there to make sure that you realize that in a couple of years where we 
even though we're looking at spending money this year, we might have to look at cutting um, funds in a couple of years. So with that $247,000, the parking lot um, driveway, we may have to spend up to $150,000 to complete that project. And then um, building the ground. Um, and tonight at the Board of Education meeting here, we um, might be approving the purchase of some bleachers. And so those bleachers would be $122,000. So if you look at the difference between the, um, the uh, 247, subtract off the 150, subtract off the 122, we're looking at um, a deficit of about $25,000. So with that, uh, you might think, oh, maybe maybe we need to do these projects. Maybe this isn't a good idea. But what I'd like to go back and remind you is that I had said, you know, we need at least $1.9 million so that we shouldn't have to short-term borrow. We had $2.2 million, $2.25 million, actually. And I said, we should, we should spend down the fund balance by $200,000. Essentially, there's a you know a little over a hundred and fifty thousand dollar cushion there. So I believe that um, the board can easily do both of those projects and not have to worry about drawing down the fund balance so far um, to to impede our our short term borrowing um, plan. How we've been how we've been doing um, the last couple of years. So, any questions? It's a lot of information. Looks like there are no questions. Thank you very much, Mrs. O'Brien. I know that you put a lot of work into that. Thank you so much for, for having me. All right, now we're on to director's reports. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Covarubias? Or Mr. Covarubias, do you have any comment? Oh, not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Board comments, is there any board member who wishes to share comments on this time? All right, committee reports. Does anyone have any questions for any of our committee chairs? Moving on to unfinished business. Item A, consider approval of Miola semi-annual updates excluding 0144.5, and 58. Bruce Scheller, I move that the Manor Board of Education approve Miola semi-annual policy updates excluding Excluding 0144.5, and 58.95 as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Stand for a second. second. Um, I will take Mr. Forbes. I think he beat you to it. Any discussion? I think hearing none, we'll go back to Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? We may have lost him from the meeting a moment ago. Yeah, I just checked and he is not back on. Um, it is an eye from Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries, Mr. Johnson absent. Uh, next item, E, consider approval of Miolo 145, excuse me, 144.5 board member behavior and code of conduct. Mrs. Pecky, I'll move that the Manimal Board of Education approve NEOLA policy 0144.5, board member behavior and code of conduct as presented. I have a motion by Mrs. Pecky. Do I have a second? It's 
Stand Bruce Scheller, second. second. Uh, Mr. Forbes beat you again. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing that, Mr. Seeger? Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Penke? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And it is an aye from Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries by roll call. Item C, consider approval of Miola 2522 Library Media Centers. Stan Forbes, I move that the Manoa Board of Education approve the Neola Policy 2522 Library Media Centers as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Forbes. Do I have a second? Luke Seeger, I'll second. Second by Mr. Seeger. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Penke? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And it is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Next item, consider, oops, missed a page there, Greg, sorry. Consider approval of Neola 5895 student employment. Bruce Scheller. I move to Manoa Board of Education approve NEOA policy 5895 student employment as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Mrs. Pecky, second. Second by Mrs. Pecky. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And as an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well, motion carries. Uh, new business, item A, consider approval of district literacy plan as presented. Mrs. Pecky, I move that the Manual Board of Education approve the district literacy plan as presented. I have a motion by Mrs. Pecky. Do I have a second? Stan Forbes, second. Second by Mr. Forbes. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Mm -hmm. Speaker. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And there's an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item B, consider approval of preliminary 2021 summer school program guide as presented. Stan Mrs. Forbes, Pike. I'm... Go ahead, I'm Stan. Moved. Okay, sorry. I move that the Manual Board of Education approve the 2021 Summer School Program Guide as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Forbes. Do I have a second? Mrs. Pecky, second. Second by Mrs. Pecky. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Mm -hmm. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And as an aye from Mrs. Johnson as well, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item C, consider approval of E-rate quote for HP Aruba products. Bruce Scheller, I move the Manor Board of Education approve the E-rate quote for HP Aruba products to replace course switches as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Luke Seeger, I'll second. Second by Mr. Seeger. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Mm -hmm. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. And we have an aye from Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Uh, item B, consider approval of a three-year contract with Wixley for professional auditing services. Mrs. Pecky, I move that the Manual Board of Education approve the three-year contract with Wixley 
for professional auditing services as presented. I have a motion by Mrs. Peck. Do I have a second? Mr. Holman, I second that. Second by Mr. Holman. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Petke. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. And it is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. <laughs> Item E, consider approval of exterior bleacher quote from Southern Bleacher Company represented by North Star Equipment LLC as presented. Luke Seeger. I move that the Manoa Board of Education approve the exterior bleacher quote from the Southern Bleacher Company represented by North Star Equipment LLC as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Seeger. Do I have a second? Stan Forbes, second. Second by Mr. Forbes. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Mm -hmm. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pinkley? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. It is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries by a roll call vote. Item F, consider approval of the Spiegelberg implement quote for the concrete slab installation as presented. Dan Forbes, I move that the Manitoba Board of Education approve the Spiegelberg implement incorporated Quote for the concrete slab installation as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Forbes. Do I have a second? Luke Seeger, I'll second. Second by Mr. Seeger. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. And is an eye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item G, consider approval of spring events proposal as presented. Mrs. Peck, I move that the Manual Board of Education approve the spring events proposal as presented. I have a motion by Mrs. Peck. Do I have a second? Bruce Scheller, second. Oh, I think Russ is on now. Are you back on, Mr. Johnson? Yes, I am. Awesome. Uh, awesome, awesome. All right. Um, Bruce, you did that second? Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And it is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item H, consider approval of the 2021 Spring Instrumental Concert as presented. Mrs. Peck, I can move that the Manual Board of Education approve the 2021 Spring Inter Instrumental Concert proposal as presented. I have a motion by Mrs. Peck. Do I have a second? Stan Forbes, second. Second by Mr. Forbes. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Petke. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item I consider approval of visual arts classic proposal. Bruce Scheller, I move that the Manor Board of Education approve the visual arts classic proposal as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Mrs. Peck, second. I will take Mr. Johnson on that second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And as an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well, motion carries. Item J, consider approval of National Honor Society induction proposal. Mr. Johnson, I move that the Manoa Board of Education approve the 2021 National Honor Society induction program proposal as presented. 
I have a motion by Mr. Johnson. Do I have a second? Luke Seeger, I'll second. Second by Mr. Seeger. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Mm -hmm. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Patkey. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And it is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. I don't care. Consider approval of parent night proposals for spring 2021. Mrs. Pecky, I'll move that the Manual Board of Education approve the parent night proposal as presented. I have a motion by mm -hmm. Mrs. Pecky. Do I have a second? Stand for a second. Second by Mr. Forbes. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And is an eye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item L, consider approval of fitness center rules and guidelines update. Brooks Johnson, Mr. Johnson, move that the Manor Board of Education approve the updated fitness center rules and guidelines as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Johnson. Do I have a second? Mrs. Pecky, second. Second by Mrs. Pecky. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And it is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item M, consider approval of use of district facilities during the pandemic as presented. This is a move that the Manwa Board of Education approve use of district facilities during the pandemic plan is presented. I have a motion by Ms. Pecky. Do I have a second? Mr. Johnson, a second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Aye from Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Consider approval of the Board of Education Funeral Memorial Commemoration Guidelines. Stan Forbes, I move that the Manoa Board of Education approve of the Board of Education Funeral Memorial Commemoration Guidelines as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Forbes. Do I have a second? Mrs. Pecky, Mr. second. Second by Pecky. Mrs. Pecky. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And is an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Item O, consider people working from home or teleworking related to COVID-19 pandemic issues. Bruce Scheller, I move that the Manor Board of Education approve the working from home or teleworking related to COVID-19 pandemic issues only as per the CARES Act federal guidelines that extended to June 30th, 2021 by the Manor Board of Education for the emergency Paid sick leave act as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Scheller. Do I have a second? Russ Holman, I second that. Second by Mr. Holman. Any discussion? Yeah. Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Aye for Mrs. Johnson as well. Motion carries. Item P, consider approval of a district calendar change from an in-person to an asynchronous instruction day. Mr. Johnson, I move that the Manuel 
Board of Education approve a district calendar change from in from an in person to asynchronous instruction day on Thursday, April first, two thousand twenty one. I have a motion by Mr. Johnson. Do I have a second? Luke Seeger, I'll second. Second by Mr. Seeger. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman? Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And as an aye from Mrs. Johnson, full motion carries. Item Q, consider approval of the school year 21 board meeting dates as presented. Luke Seeger, I move that the uh, Manor Board of Education approve the fiscal year 2021 to 20 through 2022 Board of Education meeting dates as presented. I have a motion by Mr. Seeger. Do you have a second? Mr. Johnson. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes? Aye. Mrs. Pecky? Aye. Mr. Scheller? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And as an aye from Mrs. Johnson, as a motion carry. Next meeting dates March 22nd, 2021, Human Growth and Development Clinic, 6 o'clock virtual. April 8th, the Board of Canvas meeting at 10 a.m. in the boardroom. April 12th is Finance, 6 o'clock virtual. April 12th, Meetings and Browns at 7. April 14th, Curriculum 5. April 14th, Policy and Human Resources at 6. And April 26th is a regular board education meeting at 7 p.m. I am looking for a motion to adjourn. Russ Holman, I make a motion we adjourn the meeting. I have a motion by Mr. Holman. Do I have a second? Mr. Scheller, second. Second by Mr. Scheller. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Seeger. Aye. Mr. Holman. Aye. Mr. Forbes. Aye. Mrs. Pecky. Aye. Mr. Scheller. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And as an aye for Mrs. Johnson as well, motion carries at 8.32 p.m. Thank you all very much for joining us this evening. Take care, guys.